Hello punters and welcome back to another Saturday Racing Preview. Of course, in this video, we're looking at the Rose Hill meeting on the weekend. Got a really nice car to look forward to. Got the Tancred Stakes uh, in race number six. Uh, of, and then we've got the Vinery Sud Stakes in the, over the 2,000 metres in race number seven. The uh, Jim Beam Emancipation Stakes. And then also the uh, Doncaster Prelude in race number nine. So really looking forward to getting into that. Uh, also, race number five, the, the Security Star Kingdom is also quite a nice race as well. So really looking forward to getting stuck into that. So we'll get straight into the, the start of the meeting. Race number one, uh, 1,400 metres, benchmark 88. Looking at the speed map for the first race of the card. Um, I'd say that Ken's Dream will be up towards the speed. I'd say Condor and Royal Celebration from the outside barrier will get across and find the top uh, Purple Sector Commander and top prospect usually are close to the, the pace as well. So... I think that they'll be the two leaders. Condor will find the front, and Royal Celebration uh, might better work its way across and uh, sit outside the lead. Uh, in this race, look, I'm pretty keen to go with number 12, Sausage, here. I think they're going to really put a, a good tempo on for it to run on from the back. Uh, it was pretty good last time out at Canberra. They just got a lot way too far back in that race there. Well, um, and then prior to that, it was really good uh, behind Gold Touch at uh, Canberra as well. So it's had two nice runs leading in. Uh, comes into this now third up. I think can improve immensely off that uh, last start performance. I think the race can be run to suit. Bottom weight, Jason Cole. So I think it's going to be really hard to beat. Uh, look, looks one to beat for me on top. So I'm going to have it on top ahead of number seven, Top Prospect, who was a really nice win first up by the 400 metres. Wasn't sure if it would be a bit short of its ideal distance range, but uh, Chris Lees has kept it at this distance range here once again. Uh, I think it's going to have a decent enough chance. It's fr From the barrier, it's going to get a real ideal run in the race. I think um, you could definitely back with a little bit of confidence each way, I think. So at the $8, I could definitely um, see you having a good chance. Uh, the other horse, number two, Ken's Dream. Look, he, he's been a hard horse to follow. He hasn't really won in a long time. So in terms of a winning prospect, I'm not too sure about it. But I think he can run a good race once again. He was very good last time out at Canberra behind Cuba and Sabacca. So same race. Four minds I'm talking about with Sausage. Uh, I think uh, Sausage can turn the tables on Ken's Dream here, but uh, Ken's Dream is a horse. He, he doesn't mind the wet track, so that also plays into his favour, and he uh, draws barrier one, so he, he should be able to get a good run into the race uh, from that gate. Uh, the other horse I want to make a, um, a mention of is number 10, Royal Celebration. If it's able to get across and sit outside the speed, I think it'll be quite hard to beat. Uh, it was a really nice second last time out at... Rose Hill behind the very informed uh, positive piece who goes around in the much tougher race later on in the card. So looking forward to that. Uh, but yeah, Royal Celebration, look, no knock. Just don't think from uh, Barry 12. Where else 50 is the right price, so I'd rather uh, lean elsewhere. Look, Condor uh, will also be up there and get it, make its own luck on the speed. And the other horse I'm really keen to, to see how it performs is number five, Surrey Thunder, an import coming across for Chris Waller. It's got a good rap, this horse, and has won on a soft track before, so I'll be interested to see how it can perform first up. Uh, obviously, it's more ideal. This range will be the, the 2,000 metres plus, but I still think it could run a decent race. Not sure if you could back it, but interested to see how it can perform. But look at the first race. I'm keen to play number 12, Sausage, on top for me. Uh, ahead of number ahead of number 7, Top Prospect. In the second, in the third, number 2, Ken's Dream. And in the fourth, number 10, Royal Celebration. Move on to race number seven. It's the sweep of Essen over 1,400 metres for the two-year-olds. Uh, really deep field as well. Really looking forward to seeing how this plays out. Look at the speed map. Um, for a two-year-old race, actually, there's not a ton of speed. So uh, I'd say Holy Field and Untamed May off the inside barrier will kick up and get close to speed. Postcode usually up towards the speed. Obligatory will be up there. I'd say other horses that might try and push forward. Aftermath, Return with Honour, often likes to find the speed. So... Uh, it's really a bit of an interesting one. In terms of 100% definite leaders, I could see probably three or four, but uh, never know. A few of those off the inside barriers might push up time. Miss Precious, I don't think we'll, we'll want to get as far back as it did last time out. Um, and then also likes a pink bow as well from, bar from barrier number uh, 10. Uh, barrier number 13, sorry, might get closer towards the speed as well. But um, look, for me, I'm going to go with number um, number seven. I am swerving. I thought its run last time out at Rose Hill was terrific. Uh, behind Prague and Kamasi, it was really coming home well. It went through the line nicely. I think it's going to really relish that extra 200 metres up to the 1,400. Uh, it's going to be quite to beat. It's got that placing on the soft track, which was last start. So it's ticked off that. We know it can get through the ground. And I think it's a real progressive horse. So it's really going to uh, 
get a great run into the race uh, based on the way that the race looks shaped to pan out. So I'm going to have it on top. Out of number six, time is Precious, who was also very good last time out at Rose Hill behind Thermosphere. Um, it was a good run. Just sort of got caught up on the inside and was looking for a run through. Uh, I, I think that the best part of the track was out wide, so it adds a bit more merit to that performance there from time is Precious. So definitely give it a good chance to run well again. Prior to that at Flemington was a... A nice run behind uh, I Love Myself and River Knight. So I don't know if that form's 100% accurate. I, I Love it Myself wasn't fantastic uh, last time out um, when it ra raced in Sydney. And I just think that maybe that, that form isn't quite there. But Thomas Press should get a good run in the race and should be hard to, uh, should be right up in the finish. Uh, the other horse I want to give a bit of a chance to is uh, number nine, uh, Gems, who I think is probably a bit over the odds. It was third in that race um, behind. Thermosphere and time is precious. So it really came home nicely. Went around 100 to 1 on that occasion won, and run much better than that. And I think it's going to be a horse that probably appreciates getting up to 400 metres. Um, it, it, it was a weird one because he, he loomed up and um, and she, she looked like she was going to go straight past him, but she just couldn't get... Um, she did a few things wrong. was a little bit green. So I think maybe um, you know if she, if she can iron herself out here, get a bit more time to relax and then work into her gear, she might go very close winning this at $12. So she's a good chance. And the other horse I want to make a bit of a claim for is uh, number eight, Untamed, who I think is well over the odds. Uh, it was a nice first up performance at Canterbury, uh, albeit maybe the, um, you know, I don't know about the, the strength of that form in comparison to some of the others, but the time run wasn't too bad. And um, it's had a couple of tick over trials since, and I think it might just be ready to go here. And off Barry one, with National Will in the saddle, you could definitely do a lot worse than going at the twenty seven dollars and seven fifty each way. I think it's got a bit of progression in it. This horse, so I wouldn't be surprised if it can come out and run a good race. But recap the numbers for me: number seven, I am swerving, looks the one to beat for me. Ahead of number six, time is precious in for second. Uh, in for third, number nine, gems, and in for eight, uh, fourth, number eight, untamed. Move on to race number three, it's the Tab Tullock Stakes, so 2,000 metres. Uh, look at the speed map for this race here. Only a small nine-horse field, but it uh, look, looks quite a nice race regardless. I think High Master and Pride of Adelaide and uh, Zabrowski will be close to the speed. Uh, quick Thinker will be... Oh, I don't think I want to get too far back from that barrier. I might want to be quite prominent and get uh, close to the... Maybe just sitting behind the speed. So it be interesting to see what happens there. Uh, but look, for me, I, I think... Going to get straight to the point. I think number one, Quick Think, is one of the best bets of the day. I think it's going to be extremely hard to beat. I mean, you look at the form last time out behind Funstar and Probabil. They were in this race. They would both be very short price favourites. So Quick Think has got to be a, a great chance to win this race. Uh, it's a proven wet tracker, so no problems there. James McDonald on the saddle, great gate. Just think it's going to be extremely hard to beat here. Um, coming up to the 2,000 metres suits perfectly. Uh, this horse has never missed a placing at the track either. It's had uh, three starts for one win and two placings, so it doesn't mind coming around here. And I just think the step up 2,000 metres will be perfect for this horse, so I'm going to have it on top. Uh, ahead of number number two, Fortress Command, who hasn't been in good form, but I think the step up to the 2,000 metres will really uh, suit this horse nicely. Um, just hasn't... Well, I mean, you have a look at its two runs on paper, ninth and 10th, but they really aren't that bad. I mean, the 10th last time out was... Four, just just a touch under five lengths behind Shadow Hero and Microphone. That's some very nice form um, at Ramwick there in the, in, the, in the Ramwick Guineas. And then prior to that, at Rose Hill, was uh, finished f uh, five lengths behind Brandenburg and re Reloaded. So been around some good form lines. And I think the step up 2,000 metres will suit this horse nicely. So I'm going to have it in for second, in for third. Number six, Pride of Adelaide, who really does um, look at a talented horse in the making. Uh, it's... Couldn't have done much more in its two starts to date at Newcastle and Hawkesbury. Just as absolutely annihilated its opposition by seven lengths at Newcastle over the 1350, then over the 1600, uh, one by 3.3 lengths. So that's what you like to see from a horse that knows how to put them away and is a proven wet track. So two starts on uh, one on a soft, one on heavy, two wins. So, uh, But for me, 480 is a bit short when it's coming out against horses with that have raced in much better company. So I, I'd rather... I do think it'll run well, just don't know if it's a winning uh, prospect for me. I'll have to see a bit more improvement from out of it, but I do concede it's a talented horse. And then um, for, then if a uh, fourth, number three, Relucent for Chris Wall and Tommy Barron in the saddle, was second last time out at Mooney Valley behind too close to the sun. Uh, on that night, look, it was very hard to make ground the leaders, but Relucent really got through the line nicely, so I think uh, it'll appreciate coming back to Sydney. Just seemed to get on the wrong leg there and, and just... Um, yeah, it took a some time to wind up again around the Mooney Valley track. So coming back, 
uh, to Rose Hill, I think will uh, suit this horse much better and, and get, draws a pretty good gate as well. I think from Barrier 7, it can slot just in behind the speed. Uh, but recap those numbers for me. I think number one, Quick Think, is one of the best bets of the day. So I'm going to have it on top ahead of number two, Fortress Command, in for second. In for third, number six, Pride of Adelaide. In for fourth, number three, Relucent. Move on to race number four. It's the Iron Jack Neville uh, Selwood uh, over the 2,000 metres. Look at the speed map for this race here. I'd say that uh, Made of Ore and uh, Jamara will, will probably find the top, but not a whole lot of speed here. I think Mount Tabora will, will be up there and be prominent as well. But, yeah, look, not a lot of speed for a 2,000-meter race here. And as such, I'll be interested to see if any of these make a surprise move towards the lead. I'd be interested to uh, maybe wait out on that on the day. Uh, but, look, I'm quite keen to go with... Um, sorry, I'm quite keen to go with number, number two, Night's Watch, here. I'm going to give him one more chance because last time out over the 1,500, he uh, was, was coming to the race pretty well. I just think that... Um, this extra 400 metres, well, from last start, 500 metres, uh, will be absolutely perfect for him. I think he's um, up to his right distance range now. You know, Chris Waller's got the reins now in Night's Watch, and I just think that um, from, from that barrier, if they can get close enough um, to the speed, he, he could get a real good run in the race. So I think 460 is a good uh, price about a horse who's got a very good chance in a race like this. So I've got him on top, head of number one, Life Less Ordinary, who... Uh, again, has, has got some very good form around it. Last time, a fourth by a master of wine. And Musagio, I think, is very good form to bring in a race like this. Isn't the best on a, on a, on a soft uh, to wet track. but um, So for me, 280, maybe a little bit under the odds about a horse that hasn't won in a little while. But look, he, he is a very good horse, and I think he'll run well here again. Uh, so I'm going to have him in for second. In for third, number six, Mount Tabora, who I think will get its um, own time on the speed. And that might just be good enough for it to give a good enough kick to pinch the race with Tommy Mark on the saddle. He, he rates his horses very well and he's in terrific form. So I wouldn't be surprised if this horse can run a really good race. It was a decent enough fourth last time out behind thinking over Costello. It's going to have to improve because it is facing tougher opposition here. But I do concede that if it finds the lead and is, a, is able to dictate the terms, it will be hard to beat. Uh, and number eight, Oliferous maybe is a little bit forgotten about here. I think it's um, peaking now. comes into this race fourth up. Uh, last time fourth by Missy Beale and Gaia Tree uh, over the 900 metres. Gets that extra 100 metres. I think that, um, um, look, she, she's very progressive. And we know her best form is definitely going to be good enough for a race like this. So it be interesting to see how, how she can perform in this sort of race. She, uh, she, look, she hasn't won in a while, but um, she generally is, uh, is quite competitive in races. So I think she'll run a good race once again. And I've got her for fourth. But recap the numbers for me. Number two, Night's Watch on top. Head of number one, Life Less Ordinary. In for second, in for third, uh, number six, Mount Tabora. And in for fourth, number eight, Oliferous. Move on to race number five now. And we've got the uh, two, uh, 1,200 metres, uh, Security Star Kingdom. A real nice race here. Look at the speed map. I'd say the Vega Days, Spanish Dream, Villamire will, will be right up towards the speed. Uh, uh, Fell Swoop usually has to get forward in its runs. Be interesting to see where Manicure and, and Kemitara, of course, returning to the track for the first time in just over a year looking forward to seeing him go around um, and handle the truth I think will also be quite prominent towards the speed so could be a little bit of pace on but you do expect that for a 1200 meter race so uh, look I think Vega Day is going to be really hard to beat Tom Mark in the saddle I think this horse can get towards the speed um, is rock hard fit now it's had four runs this prep um, last time out on the heavy track it was uh, six in that imaging race I think that um, perhaps didn't quite get through the heavy ground well. Prior to that, it was a second behind Quacker Jack, who's in great form. And prior to that, was a, a beat Rahirin on a soft track. So comes back to that soft track. So three starts on, on a soft track for two wins and a, and a second. Um, has won here twice before at Rose Hill. And I just think that it's going to get a good run in the race. And $9 about it is a pretty good price for me. So I'm going to have it on top. And then number one, Kemitari, who his best form is very much up to winning this. And he, I think he's well suited that there's going to be a, a, a potentially a wet track first up for him. Uh, his recent trial was very good, beating Super Seth on a soft at, um, surface at Ramwick. And then prior to that, he was a, a fourth in a trial behind Unforgotten on a soft track as well. So he, he has been trialing on this sort of surface. So it's quite nice for him to come into this first up. Not sure if he'll... Um, perhaps lack the fitness, but he's definitely got the turn of foot and sharpness. So he's a bit of a, an interesting runner because his best will definitely win this race, and he'll uh, he'll probably blitz his opposition if he's at his best. I don't think he will be, but I do think he'll run a very good race. And six dollars to two twenty to find out um, is a pretty good price. I wouldn't, I would definitely not say no to having an each way play on him. 
So I've got him in the second. In the third, number nine, Villamai, who was terrific first up at Ramwick on the soft track over 1,100 metres. Was just way too sharp for him. Beat Cosmic Force on that occasion. So a bit, bit of a different form line. I still think that's a very strong form line. I think I've got a high opinion of Cosmic Force. So I think Villamai, if it can get fine in the front on Tim Clark, it will be hard to beat. But from Barrow 12, I just couldn't uh, go into um, it as a favourite. I just think that there's a few other horses that might get a better run in the race that I could, can trust a little bit more from their gates. Uh, and and, a, and also a better price. Uh, the horse that's a real smoke in this race is number 10, Diplomatico. It's always had a big rap, this horse. And first up, I thought it was a decent run behind start of the season. River Bird on the soft track over 1,500 metres here at Rose Hill. Uh, comes into this second up, I can see a big improvement from this horse. And he's definitely up to winning winning a race like this. And I think $17 about him is a, is a crazy price. I mean, he's drawn a, a nice gate as well. I think that there'll be a lot of speed, so he'll be able to just settle back of the field but into a decent enough spot so i think that he will get a nice run into the race and if they overdo it out front he'll come storming home the other horse that i think could run well is number eight god of thunder i haven't got it in my top four but if you are playing those um wide quaddies or first fours or whatever i do think suggest putting him in uh, he's very good on a wet track he's had three starts on a soft track and uh for two wins and he's had two starts on a heavy track for a win and a placing so i think he's got a very good chance and then also at this track He's had three starts of two wins and a placing. So he doesn't, he, he loves running at Rose Hill on a wet track. So I think he can return to form after a disappointing run up the straight last time out. Uh, so he, he expects some improvement out of him as well. Uh, and Fell Swoop's an interesting run. Again, Fell Swoop's best can, can go very close here. I wouldn't be leaving him out either. And he loves a soft track as well. Uh, so he's got a good chance uh, also. But look, I think this race is going to be uh, Vega days to, to lose. I think it's uh, going to be right up on the speed. Rock hard fit now can run these off their off their legs on the soft track. Um, but in for second, very wary of Kemitari. I would strongly suggest need to play on him. He's got a very good chance at a race like this. Uh, if for, if for third number nine Villamine, if for fourth number ten Diplomatico. Move on to race number six, and it's the two thousand four hundred meter T uh, Kia Tancred Stakes. Really forward to this. It's the feature of the day. Look at the speed map, Angel of Truth. I'd say we're fine at the top. Shouldn't get too. Um, too much pressure on it. I'd say very elegant after its last uh, last star performance uh, where it was narrowly beaten by Addy B. Addy we'll get towards speed once again. I think about to sit up there with Angel of Truth. Uh, interesting to see what, how close Mugger 2 gets for, from that outside barrier. Um, so a little bit of an inter interest here into how this race plays out. Now look, I'm worried about potentially the lack of tempo, but I think Avilius uh, is going to be really hard to beat here for me. Comes back to Rose Hill, a track that he absolutely loves. He's had four starts for three wins and a placing at, at uh, this track. Last time out, he was excellent in that uh, Addy B being very elegant race. He was coming home nice. Uh, he just got way too far back. The two leaders, Addy B and um, very elegant, stole it, really. They just got too far in front. Uh, and I think the seven-day backup will um, suit him nicely. He gets the extra 400 metres to get into his work and, and wind up. I think... He did win this race last year as a short price favourite, so I think he can return to that form and he can run well here. So I've got him on top, rock hard fit now. I think he, he can win the race. Uh, ahead of number nine, very elegant, who was very good last time out, but uh, like I mentioned, the, the leaders were able to dictate the terms on, and um, her, her and Addy Bebe just skipped away and, and basically had the race to themselves. Um, look, she's got a good chance once again. Uh, $2 favourite is probably warranted after the last start performance. She did beat... Um, Avilius by a long way, but just not sure this time around. Um, for, for me, I just, just would rather go with Avilius. That extra 400 metres I know is going to suit him nicely. Uh, whereas and for, for her, look, she, she has run at this distance range just the once, and she has won, and she's very good at Rose Hill as well. So I think it is a race of two. I think they're the two to beat. Uh, the one who is a, a good each way chance is number four, Southern France. Um, it, was a real, it wasn't a bad first up performance in the Australian Cup on 50 stars and Regal Power. And we know how that form's turned out. It's been quite good. Uh, was si finished six lengths behind him, but it was getting through its work. And I think second up here, up to the 2,500 metres, we could see good improvement from this horse. Um, Relish is running around this distant range. And Tom Marquand's on fire at the moment. He's in the saddle. So I think he could run a good race. Uh, and then in for fourth... Look, I was torn between Mustajir and Magatu here. I'm going to go with Magatu just because this, he's, he's in great form and um, he's probably a little bit more trustworthy. Mustajir is probably, um, oh, well, I'm not going to say a better horse, but I do think it's, um, 
yeah, they're, they're, look, end of the day, they've both got good chances. And if you're playing first balls or, or uh, quaddies, I'd definitely be putting them both in. But Mugger too, look, he was um, he was good last time out. He was beaten as a $1.85 favourite, but he was beaten by a good um, stayer in Young Rascal, of course, the English import stayer. Um, and, uh, look, he, he does come up in weight, though. That's the only interesting thing. He goes from 54 to 59. So I think that might go against him, but... He is in form, and you've got to stick with that form. And like I said, Mr. Drew, I think he's got a good chance as well in the race. That'd be the five that I'll be looking at. But look, for me, number one, Avilius, thing's going to relish the extra 400 metres, and he'll run well, and he'll win this race. Ahead of uh, number nine, very elegant. In for second, in for third, number four, Southern France. And in for fourth, number six, Mugger two. Move on to race number seven now. It's the uh, 2,000 metre Vinery Stud Stakes. Uh, real, we get to see that this clash once again. Fun Star and Probabil. Uh, obviously a big step up in distance for them both last time out they clashed with the 1500 they now go up to the 2000 It'll be really interesting to see uh, if there's any change so far fun stars ha had the wood on probabil but probabil also has had a couple of wins on it as well so look at the speed map here it's so shout the bar will find the top uh, once again uh, love me quietly fun star strange charm and asiago will be close to the speed as well potentially but I can see that Shout the Barbie, the, the obvious leader, and I don't see anything else necessarily contesting it for, this, for the front. Uh, look, look, Funstar, for me, I, I'm actually going to go against it. I think the 85 is a bit uh, short for a horse that's never seen this distance range before. I do think it'll run it out fine. I don't think it'll have any problems with it. But um, for me, I, I'd rather go... Uh, I think number two probably is... The, the, the uh, 2,000 metres is going to suit him... Uh, Sorry, he's going to suit her very nicely. Um, she's obviously bred to, to get the distance um, out of being out of Savabile. We'll be able to hit the 2,000 metres perfectly. And I think that um, its last start performance wasn't too bad on the heavy track. It comes back to the soft track. Um, so, uh, surface she far more, um, she's far better on. She's had eight starts on a soft surface for four, four wins and three placings. I think she's just better value. And I think uh, she'll just relish the 2,000 metres. I think we'll see the best of her. So I'm going to have her on top. Hit him number one, Fun Star, who, no knock, is she, I absolutely love her. She's a terrific filly. Just not sure about her stepping up to 1,000 metres. She's out of Adelaide and Star Spangled, so she is bred to get to this sort of distance range. But uh, just a bit of a concern there for me. And I just think I'd rather go with the 440 about Probabil than the $1.85 about Fun Star. I think Probabil could turn the tables now coming back onto that soft surface, which she far more enjoys than the heavy. So I'm going to have her in for second. If a third number five, Asiago, was good winning last time out at Kemble Grange, it was able to get over the top of Shout the Bar on that occasion. Uh, it's a very good soft track performer and has had a place in here uh, at Rose Hill before on the track. And third up here, I think it's going to be perfect for it. We're going to see a good run from her. Uh, $20 is way over the odds uh, for her. But if a third, if a fourth, sorry, number four, Fashino, I think also has a decent chance here. Kept bringing a different form line. Uh, last time it was third behind Rubasaki and Pretty brazen. We know that Rubisaki form is quite good. Um, she's flying. She's one of the best fillies going around at the moment, Rubisaki. So I think Fashino's got a good chance. It really did wind up from the back on that occasion. And that was on a soft surface. So she has run two good runs this preparation so far on soft surfaces at Flemington. So I don't think she'll have much pro of a problem here. And Tom Marklin's in the saddle. So you've got to have, add that little bit more to it. He, he's on fire at the moment. But recap the numbers for me. I think number two probably was the one to beat. Uh, I'm going to have him, her on top in... in Ahead of number one, Fun Star, and for second. You have a third, number five, Asiago, and you have a fourth, number four, Fashino. For, uh, second last race of the card, race number eight. It's the 1500 Jim Beam uh, Eman Emancipation Stakes. It's a very hard one to say, but I uh, got it out. <laughs> uh, look at the speed map for this race. I think Amagiri, uh, Positive Peace, Sweet Scandal, and Sweet Deal will be towards the speed. Invincible Jim uh, usually likes to hum up and get close to the speed as well, but I think they're the definite speed horses. Um, and look at the, um, for me in this race, uh, it's an interesting one because uh, a lot of these uh, aren't the best horses on soft tracks, got to, just got to put it plain and simply. So a horse that uh, I think will improve off its last start performance, it went out on a heavy track behind the Conta Patero and a lot of these horses come out of that form, form race uh, last time out at Rose Hill. Uh, but I think Pudakawa can improve here coming back to... Um, Coming back onto the soft surface, had six starts on it for three wins and a placing. I think that if Jamie McDonald can get positive enough, hit, um, she'll, she'll be able to finish over the top of these. I think she's got a win in her this prep. She has promised it in her first two starts where she flashed home. Last start, she was a little bit disappointing, but I think she can 
uh, return back to that form that she had prior to that last start performance, and she can win this race at five fifty and two dollars ten. I think uh, good enough price. Uh, probably I would have liked a little bit more considering her last start performance, but I think it just shows market supports there. So I think she can run well and uh, really can win this race. Also, I'm really keen to, to see here is number one unforgotten. I'm, um, she's not a wet tracker, which is you know, a bit of a concern, but she loves running here at Rose Hill. So five starts for three wins and a placing at the track. Her trials leading in have been quite good. She did win a trial on a soft surface here at Rose Hill. So uh, interesting to note there. I know that it's different going from a trial to uh, race day, but you certainly like to see them w uh, winning the trials on the surface. So her best can definitely win this race. And that's the that's the interesting thing about it. She's $13 and $4 a place. Um and while she doesn't get through the surface, she has had a, a bit of a let off coming into this first start. She, her best can win this. So she's got a bit of a chance up against horses that are rock hard fit. Got to concede that. But um, her best can definitely go close here. So I'm going to have her in for second. Uh, in for third, uh, number four, Dawn Dawn, I think can improve back to its form prior to last start where it finished seventh in that Contipatero comp race. Comes back onto a soft surface, which I think would be much better for her. Don't think she's a uh, loves the heavy track at all. So I think we can see improvement out of her. Fifteen dollars as well over the odds about her, I think. And then uh, if a fourth uh, number eight, Sweet Deal, who is in terrific form, just isn't a wet tracker, and that's the uh, only concern I have really. Last time out was beaten by Dawn Dawn. So uh, for me, Sweet Deal being three seventy, Dawn Dawn being fifteen dollars. Massive discrepancy in the market there. I'm not too sure I can agree with that. So I don't think Sweet Deal... Uh, I wouldn't be backing out of the confidence. I think she can run well, but I don't think she's a, um, a winning chance. I think 370 is too short about her. So um, I'm going to have her in for fourth. But recap the numbers for me. I'm quite keen to play, have number nine, Perdicara, on top. Ahead of number one, Unforgotten, in for second. If a third, number four, Dawn Dawn. And if a fourth, number eight, Sweet Deal. Moving on to the last race of the card, it's the Shandon Doncaster Prelude over the 1,500 metres. Look at the speed map here. I'd say Desert Lord, something fast will get out of their inside barriers. Uh, Gala Shop will probably find the, the lead with Cuba here. And I was Look, I was keen on Gala Chop in the Bendigo Mile. I think I'm even more keen on him here, to be honest. I think he can win this first up. I think $23 is a crazy price about him. He's comes to this first up, which he is not really too much of a problem. He's at eight starts, first up for three wins and three placings. Uh, his last start, he was second behind KC over at Ascot. We know that the Ascot horses, look, they've been dominating, so you can't look down at that form. I mean, KC, we're not too sure where she can go, but I think she's a very promising horse that we'll see in the in the spring do a lot of good things. And prior to that, Gallo Shop ran some decent races. Um, I remember early in his prep at Caulfield, he was three wide, no cover, and he still ran on to run really well at the $41. I think that might have been first up as well, so... If he can re replicate that type of form, and the biggest key here, and I think the reason why Matty Williams chose to come up here to Sydney is he's got a slightly better barrier than what he had the Benigo Miles. Not a lot of speed. I think he'll find the front. He'll be able to dictate the terms. Glenn Boss in the saddle, but it's a wet track. This horse, he is so good on a wet track. He's had seven starts for five wins and a placing. He's had two starts on a heavy track for two wins. So I think he is well over the odds, and he's probably actually one of my best bets of the day. I could make him one of my best values, but he, I'm that confident he can he can run a good race. So I'm going to have him as one of my best bets. So he's on top for me. Ahead of uh, number four, Gulwa, who's been in some good form and loves a wet track. Uh, last start was fifth at Newcastle behind Special Reward. I think that was a decent enough run by Gulwa. So it was wide, uh, working home late, ever consistent. So he could definitely back it in each way, uh, quote, and be relatively confident he will uh, run a race. Number two start of the season for second. Uh, was really good first up at Rose Hill on the soft track. Uh, was an impressive performance. Comes to this second up again at Rose Hill. She's so good at this. Uh, sorry, he's so good at this track. He's had five uh, five starts of the track, four wins and a placing. So he'll run well again. Four twenty dollar eighty. The, the place is a good price once again. It could definitely give him a good uh, winning chance. And then uh, if a fourth number. Number six, Mask of Time, I think he's got a good enough chance here as well. I thought it was a decent run first up over 400 metres uh, at Flemington on the soft track. I think it'll appreciate coming here to Rose Hill, a track that uh, he has performed at before. He's had four starts for three placings, so I think he'll run well as well. But it's a nice race, but I think number one, Gallo Chop, I think he's well over the odds at an each-way price. He's going to be the uh, hard to beat. Ahead of number two, star of the season, so I'm uh, bumping up and upgrading into second. At a number four, number, Gore Warren for third, and for fourth, number six, Mask of Time. So that's my preview of Rose Hill. 
Um, my best bets, uh, look, I obviously mentioned earlier on in the car, there is a very short quote, but I think number one, Quick Thinker and race number one is going to be extremely hard to beat at the 2 hours 45. I um, think that it's just, it's race to lose. And I think um, we could, you could dive into that price with a bit of confidence, I think. So I'm going to have it on top as my best bet. Look, I could go Gallo Trop, but I'll leave it as my best value. But my second best bet of the card is in race number six, and it's number one, Avilius. I think he'll improve immensely coming up to 2,400 metres and coming back to Rose Hill, his favourite track. I think he'll run really well here. Uh, and then my best value bet has to be number one, Gallo Trop. He's, uh, like I said, I could have made one of my best bets. I can't say highly enough how good of a chance I think he has of winning. So definitely want to get on um, and get a good price. Because I think there might be a few others that might wake up and, and see where I'm getting at with the, the fact that he'll find the speed and be on, an, on a soft track, which he relishes. He'll run really well first up here. Uh, and then it, the other uh, good good best value bet for the card, oh, look, I'll probably land with race uh, race number five, number seven, Vega Days, the $9. I think it's got a very good chance and $3 the place. So th thanks for tuning in once again. Uh, not sure whether I'll be able to get the Bendigo Mile uh, video out. I could, I'll do my best. I'll try and get it done later this uh, later this afternoon and get it uploaded by this evening. So hopefully a few of you can tune in. But we'll get this video out there. I appreciate all your support and love your comments as well. I really appreciate uh, some of you leaving some, some good feedback, but also um, I guess giving giving me some of your chances as well. I, I'm really open to discussion. I, I just love talking about racing and. Talk about all the chances. Like I said, this is the point of this video. It's not just what I think will win. I think what whatever I, I uh, think is a good chance of the in the race. And if you like something else, I can uh, guess push you towards it and the reasons why I like it. So uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, if you haven't already done so, go check out my social media pages on Instagram, CLA underscore racing tips, and on Facebook, CLA racing tips. And thanks for tuning in once again. Look forward to seeing you next week. Hopefully, find plenty of winners once again this week.